everyone, Carol here at Tocast Journals. I've got guest check number 25 on my desk, so I'm going to be doing prompt 25 in the 50 stack challenge being hosted by Amy, and details of the challenge are in the description box below the video. The prompt for number 25 was wax. It brought to mind a art journal page that I did, oh, ages and ages ago, and it was using the Ranger Distress Glaze. Now, this is a type of wax. Um, it's described as a wax paste, and it's a technique that I, I did. Let me just open my art journal. This is the page that I did, and I was playing around with this Distress Glaze when it first came out. So that will tell you how long I've had this pot of Distress Glaze and it's hardly been used at all. Um, but I was playing around with it and I thought I would like to have a go again at trying this. But even though this is a wax product, I thought it might be cheating and that wouldn't really be in the spirit of what Amy was meaning when she said wax. Now, I know that there's no hard and fast rules that Amy has laid down for this challenge, but even so, I'm not going to use the Distress Glaze. I'm just wafting it around here in front of you. But I am gonna have a go at doing something like this with wax. Now, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Um, I'm just gonna give it a try, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter really, does it? So what I'm going to be using, obviously I've got my guest check. I've got here a A4 sheet of just normal copier paper that I've cut in half to A5 size. Now this isn't very lightweight copier paper, this is about £120 copier paper and when I'm printing out my digi kits I print out onto this rather than the really thin £80 stuff and these are just, um, as you can see, misprints so I thought I would use those. I also have this other trimmed down piece of paper. Now this actually is this which is specialty stamping paper, matte coated card stock. Um, I'll put the details in the description box below. This is a Ranger product. Now I've lifted this out to try it because when I was looking at all the information on the back, it gives you a whole range of what media this paper will take, but it doesn't actually mention watercolour paint and that's what I want to use today. Now if it doesn't work on either of these I think this one will take watercolour paint pretty well um, but we'll see. But if the watercolour paint that I'm planning to use doesn't work on either then I'll resort to either some distress inks or oxide sprays. But initially I want to try this technique with watercolour so I've got both of those papers to play with and I've got my little paint set here. Now this was a fairly new set that I got earlier on in the year. I absolutely love it and I want to play with this so that's why I'm trying watercolour paint to, to start with. Obviously I've got some water, a brush and some kitchen roll. I've also got these. These are, as you can see, wax lighting tapers and we have a box of these and we use these for lighting the candles in the tall hurricane lamps that we have here at home. Now, as you can see, these are fairly thin and I thought these would be brilliant. So I'm going to trim the candle down to workable pieces roughly about that size because obviously there is a wick in here and I want to get a decent line or resist on my paper using the, the wax so I'm not going to have much depth of wax before I actually hit the wick in the middle so I'm going to probably need to keep rotating this and using different pieces. I'm going to start with just the normal photocopier paper. I'm leaving those two together for no reason other than it's tidier. <laughs> I'm going to get my piece of taper and I'm just going to roughly go down my piece and I can feel already that I'm wearing out those edges. So I'm just going to cut a few more with my scissors. Grab another one. Now you can't really see 
other than holding it up to the light where your markings are and you will probably not pick that up at all but I can just pick up a faint sheen of where I've scribbled so I know to go in round about here so I'm just going to do that again bring some down at the bottom there and um, this is all going to be fairly random so let's see if I've given that a reasonable coverage yep looks awful <laughs> Never mind, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this one. And I'm just going to try and get several pieces that I actually like the look of. And this one I'm finding actually with this, this piece, whoops, this piece that I'm working with now, if I just rotate it, I can get a reasonable edge of wax. Okay, so that's those two. And as I say, these are the copier papers. So I'm just gonna pop those off to one side. And now I'm gonna try this one. And I'm gonna get myself a new piece of taper. And I'm just doing, ooh, that one broke straight away. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again. It's very difficult drawing when you can't see actually what you're drawing. I actually get a little bit more of an idea with this paper, I have to say, because with it being coated, you can actually see a little bit of what you're doing. Now I'm just going to bring in my kitchen roll and let's go with, um, let's go with the specialty paper first. I'm just going to try wet on wet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water on here pick up some colors straight off there and just pop it down oh lovely you can see the resist happening straight away that's lovely and i'm just going to lightly i don't want a very heavy background to play with so i'm just going to add some more water down here now i I warn you now, I am not a painter by any means. You've probably spotted that already. I just have a little dabble now and then. Um, so please excuse what I'm doing. I'm just having a little play. So I'm just bringing my colours down a little bit. Maybe let's go for some darker colours up here. And I think I might go in with a little bit of green at the bottom. I'm not trying to create um, a scene by any means. I'm just trying to go in with some nice soft, soft colours for this piece. So I'm just going to try and blend those in together. Maybe a little bit more colour down at the bottom here. in this one this color better so I'm just going to go in with that one a little bit more oh I'm quite liking how that's working out okay just going to ease off papers doming a little bit but that's not too bad I'm just going to go in with a slightly darker shade up here or a little bit more paint I should say just to try and get a bit of shading going on Let's see if I can bring that down and you can really see how the wax is forming a resist on here. I've just managed to splatter everything. But I think I can pick that up. There we go. Oh, yeah. Just got a little bit of pooling down here, which I don't want. 
Oh, lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in my heat gun and dry this off. And I know the colours will soften up even more, but I'm okay with that. That's exactly the, the look that I want. Got a little bit more pooling down this side here, so I'm just going to see if I can pick it up a little bit. Blend it in. Oh, I'm really liking how that's looking, yeah. Nice and soft. Doesn't actually look like trees, does it? But <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's almost dry. I'm not going to dry it completely because I'm going to leave that to air dry. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's lovely. So I'm going to, as I say, sorry, I'm going to leave that to air dry and I'm going to go in and try and see what my normal copier paper looks like. So um, I'm going to do exactly the same as I've just done. So I'm going to put the camera onto hyperlapse, everybody, and um, speed this up for you. So here we go. There we go everybody, I'm just going to dry this one off. What I've learnt with this paper, the photocopier paper, is that um, it, it took the paint better if I didn't wet the paper first and I just went in directly with um, the paint from my palette. Picking up a little bit of water on my brush, wetting the paint in my palette and bringing it straight to the paper. I've gone in with a slight variation in terms of I've gone with a pink along the top here. I'm hoping you can pick that, that up. But the intensity of colour is better on my photocopier paper than it is on here. But I'm still loving both effects. I'm quite happy with both. So I'm just going to dry this one off to see if this does lighten up. And actually I'm getting a better resist on here than I am on this one. Um, <laughs> it's a lighter weight paper and as you can see it's curling happily here <laughs> so I'm just going to dry this off see what it looks like and try the other piece of uh, copier paper that I've got here to one side and um, maybe play with a few more colours on this one because um, I think I've got the backgrounds that I want but I'm oh I'm really loving this one I have to say it's perfect So these are how my pieces have turned out and I have to say I absolutely love all of them. These two are the copier paper and as you can see I went in with a different colour combo on this one. Um, I went in with purple, a pale pink and then almost a maroon, soft maroon colour at the bottom and I am seriously tempted to use it on my guest check today because just looking off into the scrap box that I have to one side. I've got these two pieces of scrap that were left over from one of the earlier guest checks and this little portion of vintage book page. And I just think that would look amazing on there. I would infinitely love to work with this one um, because I just like the pretty pretty. But I'm not, I'm gonna go with these. And this was the, obviously the, the second piece of copier paper. And now that it's dried, its colors are softer. Whereas before, when it was wet, the paint was wet, I thought that um, the colors on here were more vibrant than on um, the specialty paper, but it's actually reversed. But there is not a lot of difference in honesty. So it just shows that it will work, this technique rather, will work on both of these. So I'm going to work with these as my colour palette for the, um, the guest check. I'm going to work with the copier paper and not this. I'm going to save this for another day. Um, and the reason I'm going with the copier paper is because I've got a couple more that I did before I switched on the camera. And I've got them off to one side. This one is the first, very first one I tried. Put it upside down and you can hardly see any of the wax resist. Um, I, I didn't press hard enough when I created my background. And as you can see, I was just playing with colors. So I've got purple and green down here mixed in amongst the, the um, orange and rust and, and the brown. So it was most definitely a play piece to see whether or not I could get it to work on this paper. And 
I've got this one. This was my second attempt, and as you can see, I've gone in much harder with the, the wax, but I've got some splodges where my I was just carrying paint across the piece, um, not really paying attention to what I was what I was doing. So these are just scrap pieces, but I'm going to use them because I don't want oodles and oodles of scrap pieces of paper left over. Um, and I'm also showing you these because somebody emailed me recently after I had shown this guest check to say it was really nice to see me have a fail um, even though it turned into a happy accident for the simple reason that it made me seem human well trust me I am seriously human I make mistakes all the time as you can see here I'm playing but I'm kind of learning from those mistakes because then when you go on and do it a little bit more you end up with backgrounds that you're absolutely happy with but my original idea for this and on the guest check was to use a piece of vintage book page like this and to do this technique on the top and that's what I got <laughs> it didn't work at all um, the paper was absolutely gorgeous and I chose it because I thought it would be robust enough to take the watercolor paint and the water that I was laying down but it just soaked it all up um, and so I was really struggling to to get the resist to to show at all so I've ended up with a grungy background because that's the color it was originally this gorgeous gorgeous aged almost creamy color and now I have this rather browny smudgy grungy color but trust me I have epic fails all the time <laughs> So, okay, what am I going to do with this? Right, well, originally I thought that I would make almost like an envelope on my piece um, and have, let me just fold this in half and have something like that as my um, tuck spot and then have, or pocket rather, and then have this piece going over the top and this would open and be my flap. But I'm, I've change that up a bit as I've been playing because obviously I have all these bits now so what I thought I would do is with the very first piece that I made I thought that I would use it to cover the front of my guest check and use these two pieces to create a couple of flaps um, and I think I might put a, a piece of vellum along the bottom of my guest check on this piece ready for something to tuck into it like a, a tag. So I've got my pieces of paper all trimmed to size and this is going to be my back portion as I mentioned. This is going to be my left hand side cover. So I've got a little flap there which I'm going to glue underneath this portion that's going on the front of the guest check. I'm going to glue that, that down and then that will fold over like that so that I've got the background on both sides. And similarly with this one, I've got that little hinge there. Let me lift that out of the way. Little hinge there like that. That's going to go on there and that's going to go over the top. Now I've deliberately made it so that I have an overlap here. Um, I didn't want it exactly meeting down the middle like a gatefold and I could even have it that way round if I wanted to and I think I probably will. I, I quite like how that's blending together. I found a scrap piece of vellum and I've just trimmed it off the bottom and that's going to go on the bottom of this inside panel for here. So I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny dab of glue to just very gently hold this piece of vellum in place because I'm going to stitch this vellum to this background. You don't actually have to put glue on here before you stitch. Um, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. So I'm just going to give that a little second to adhere. These obviously are my front cover pieces like that and like that and that's how I'm going to have them overlapping but I was thinking about my closure and how I'm going to put this all together and how I'm going to do my stitching 
Um, what I've decided is to do a magnet closure. So what I've done is inside these flaps, I have just used some double sided tape to adhere a couple of magnets. So I've got one there and I've got one there. Um, but before I glue these panels in place, I want to do some stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to stitch all the way along the top down this long edge and down this edge and then glue these two pieces together so that I have the right side of my stitching on both sides. Okay, so I've stitched round these two pieces, just gone in with an off-white. I could obviously have gone in with a, a much stronger contrasting thread, but I just wanted a subtle hint of the stitching. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel away this double-sided tape and I'm going to glue my flaps together. Now, as you can see, I've stitched over my double-sided tape, but it pulls out quite, quite nicely like that. No effort at all. And I've got my art glitter glue here. So I'm just going to glue There we go. As you saw, I just went round both pieces with some Vintage Photo Distress Oxide just to add an, a little bit of framing to these pieces. And I need to leave these to dry for a second now. So whilst they're drying, I'm going to look at this piece. I think I'm going to stitch this. So I'm going to go away and do that now. That's my inside portion of the guest check complete and I've stitched round, trimmed off the excess of the vellum. These are almost dry so I'm going to go ahead with them. Um, I'm going to glue this portion to the back of this piece on this side and similarly with that piece. And this is where I hope that I've lined up those magnets and it holds and I have. So that's going to hold shut. It's just lifting slightly at the moment, but not too badly. So I'm OK with with that. And now what I need to do is I need to glue this onto my gas check. There we go everybody this is the background glued on to the guest check and I'm really happy with how that's gone together and my magnets meet um, it is lifting a little bit as you can see here perhaps there we go it's just lifting slightly I'm getting a connection with the the magnets but it might have been better to have put a third one in there um, I need to do some sort of embellishment on the front cover. So what I was thinking was I would do the embellishment just in this area here. If I hold this up to the camera, you can see that there's a slight area of bleaching, almost a line there. Now, I don't mind that, but that seems to me an ideal place to put some sort of embellishment. Now, I've got this little scrap of fabric, two pieces of fabric that have just been stitched together. And I thought that would be quite nice to use because I'm liking the colours in that particular leaf against the background here. So I'm thinking maybe something like that. That little bit there is annoying me. So I'm going to have to um, either glue that bit down or give it a press. Now I've been playing around with this little doily and I wondered whether or not I could put three of these little daisies underneath and that goes quite nicely. Um, similarly, it would look quite nice on the cover actually, wouldn't it? Um, but it's such a shame to, to cover up that background. So I was looking at that. Um, I was wondering whether this might be better. Now, this is just a scrap of uh, lace that I've got in my, my stash here. And as you can see, I've obviously ripped it away from something. And I was wondering whether a little piece of that might look better than the um, daisies on here. Now, these are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. They're very delicate, which is is lovely because I wanted this to be delicate but together it might might be too delicate so I was wondering whether to use a little piece of that and I'm liking quite liking those kind of frayed edges down there um, and I think that's probably the best area so I think I'm going to go with 
a piece of this so I'm just going to snip it I probably can't tear this um, no I can't tear it so it's just a case of snipping it and kind of fraying the edges a little bit so I'm thinking maybe something like that on there um, this is where I fall down. I'm not very good at doing this sort of um, embellishing. I've got this little piece of um, German book text that I lifted out earlier on when I was playing around with the pink background that I did or the pinky purple one. And I'm actually liking this on here better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip away a little portion of it just see what it what it looks like there we go everybody i think i'm going to go with that arrangement i'm going to glue that down and i'm going to find a little vintage button and stitch that on in this area here i've just found a little mother of pearl button so i've put a little bit of thread through it pop it in the center of this daisy well actually i'm going to put it off center so that i get more of the daisy lace showing behind it and um, this little button going down onto this little piece of German book text. Close up my piece, flip it over. I'm just going to position that on it like that. And gently use my bone folder to adhere it. And I'm quite happy that these edges are all loose. So the main part of the glue is in the middle. I'm just going to leave that to set for just a second. Whilst I put my glue, glue away. I'm actually, I'm looking at it now thinking, is that straight? And none of it is straight. Oh goodness, Carol, what are you doing? Obviously, even my German book text isn't straight there, but oh, gosh, honestly, I lose patience with myself. So I'm going to need to come up with a plan B to hide the fact that that's um, skew if. As you can see, I've got a little pot here off to one side of mini labels. All I've done with these is punch them out, um, out of backgrounds and little bits of book page, um, all sorts. Kept some little bits of text like that where I've backed it onto something. And this is a little pot that just lives on my windowsill. I've picked out one from another background. Let me just lift that up to the camera so you can see. That one, I that one more or less matches the, the background that I've got here. And I've just pushed it underneath the button that I've glued down because this piece of German text um, was well and truly glued down. I knew it wouldn't move but the button I've only just glued down, so I know I've got some movement on that. So what I thought I would do is just try and find a little bit of this book text and just rip out a word and glue it on. And it's the same German book text that I've used down there, so it will match. And just a tiny portion, that's all I need, just to glue on to my little tag. I have no idea what it means, but I'm just going to glue that on top. And then it doesn't matter if my G original German book text underneath is skew if, because this piece is as well, and it looks like it's supposed to be like that. So there you go, another um, quick fix and another example of how I act I can mess up all the time. So I feel like I want to do something to tuck into this pocket here. Um, and I am regretting that I didn't ink the edge of that vellum, but it doesn't matter. So what I've done is some of the spare background, I've just ripped out a portion of it. Now this was on the specialty paper and oh my goodness, this tears beautifully. Um, I've used a bit of um, vintage book page and I've just ripped that as well to size and I've got this now this is absolutely adorable this is a business card and 
that I've picked up recently. Now, I always pick up business cards. If I see a really nice one, I pick it up. And um, I saw this the other, the other week, and this is a business card for a local artist. So I thought I would use this image because it's got hints of green in the lady's um, coat or jacket there. Also soft orangey colours in the vegetation on either side. And then obviously the yellowy colour for the sand so this is absolutely perfect and i think it's so cute so i'm going to use this so i'm going to layer those up together like that and i'm going to pop this on here and just take up part of that lower line of text there so i'm going to have that on there like that i'm going to glue this onto this paper and then i'm going to run round the business card on my sewing machine then i'm going to come back and i'm going to glue that all together like that and then i'm going to ink the edges so i'm going to do that but before i do that i want to put a little bit of an embellishment down here now when i was doing this this piece as soon as i finished it i thought Oh, for goodness sake, I should have used a wax seal or something like that on there. But this little pocket down here is a fabulous opportunity for me to do something down there and use a wax seal. So I've lifted out these. Now, these are not wax seals that I've done. These have come from my lovely friend, Kimberly, who is Pink Tabby Papery on Etsy. Please go over, take a look at her shop, because if you can pick up one of her nesting boxes uh, when she creates those, oh, you're in for such a treat. And oh my goodness, they are stacked full of wonderful goodies. These weren't included in her last nesting box that I had. These are some that she has in her, her shop from time to time. And the reason I've dug these out is because, as you can see, there's a little tiny one there and there and I've lifted out a third one here. So I'm going to use this tiny, tiny little one here and it's got a hint of gold over the top of it. It's a clear, little clear one and it's got a hint of gold over the top and it's a delicate image of a flower and that is just perfect. If I'd used one of my wax seals, it would have been too thick and I would have had even more issues with that closing. I've got a hint of this paper left over, so I'm just going to rip that away and I'm going to take that text and I'm gonna have that on there. Then I've got another one of the little daisies. I've got a bit of fluff or something on that one doesn't matter. I'm just going to put that one down there like that. And then I've got a little tab on the back of the seal, which if I pull away is sticky. And I'm just going to have that there and just have it as a tiny little um, embellishment on my vellum pocket. So everybody, I'm going to go away and I'm going to glue this in place. I'm going to do what I said in relation to the little tag to go in the pocket. And then I will be back when this piece is finished just to show you what it looks like. And with the magic of YouTube, as always, this is my finished piece, everybody. So I'm really happy how it's turned out. I'm really grateful to Amy for giving us this prompt to use wax because it's given me the opportunity to try out a new technique. I'll do some close-ups at the end if you can't quite see what I'm showing you, but that's my embellishment on the front. If I open it up inside, that's what it looks like. I could put a little... Uh, journaling spot on either side of that um, of these flaps if I wanted to but I'm quite happy with how it looks and that's my little tiny embellishment here so there's my daisy my little wax seal and I use the reverse of that piece of paper that I showed earlier just because the text on the reverse was slightly smaller and I thought that went went better and this is my little insert for inside as you can see i've just stitched round the outside of the business card as i said i would and then flip over that's my background paper on the reverse and i've also stitched round that and then i've glued it all together this is still slightly damp um but it won't take long to to dry at all so there we go thank you so much everybody for watching i hope you like seeing this piece come together 
Um, I've still got one or two pieces off to one side and I have this piece. So we've got prompt 26 to deal with next and I think I will use this on my guest check for prompt 26. So until the next video everybody, take care, bye bye now.